I hate waiting for things, and I especially hate having to wait for furnaces to smell items. I mean, this... Look at this. I could be doing much more exciting stuff right now. I could be riding that pig right now, but instead I'm waiting for this. So here is my plan of action. I want to create a massive, enormous super smelter. The biggest super smelter I've ever made, and then I'm going to fuel it using things that I don't actually have to gather myself. Because what do I hate more than waiting for things? I hate having to actually gather things. You know, actually having to gather resources and pick up stuff to use stuff that I've already built, that's just, that's not for me. I would rather wait for it. So I think we've got ourselves a bit of a plan of action. Let's get to work on building this thing. This is one strip of furnaces. We've got 32 furnaces here, but we are not finished yet. Two strips, so that's 64 furnaces. We're still going. This is 192 furnaces, and we are still not done. But I am going to have to move some stuff around. You see, I completely forgot that there was going to be redstone circuits between all of these furnaces, so nothing would have fit. So I should probably actually develop this thing and get it worked out first. And then we can start getting all the furnaces in. I just got a little bit carried away at the start there. You see, the thing that I'm having to work out here is the fueling. Normally with regular fuel like coal or coal blocks, we can run a hopper minecart over the top of all of these hoppers. All of the coal gets evenly distributed into all of the furnaces and everything is great. But with this one, we're going to be making use of lava buckets and lava buckets don't stack. So that means that we'd send the hopper minecart across. It would only fill up the first five furnaces and then it would be completely empty and it would just continue off and none of these furnaces would get any fuel. So I need to create a system that tells the hoppers when they have a lava bucket inside of them and locks them so they can't get any more lava buckets in them. And that will allow the lava buckets to fill up in all of the other hoppers. And then when all of the hoppers are filled with at least one lava bucket, the whole system will then unlock, allowing the lava buckets to travel through into the furnaces all at once. So all of them will have fuel. That sounded really, really complicated. I apologize. Literally, all I'm trying to do is stop this lava bucket from going through into the furnace, which it has done. It has done. Look, 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 look. It is, it is there. It's in that hopper. So that's exactly right. But then this system knows that we're getting ourselves an output. And then only when we get an output from all of the furnaces, all of the furnaces have those lava buckets stalled in those hoppers there. Only when that happens, will those lava buckets be released and allowed to go into the furnace. So then we can guarantee that all of the furnaces are getting all of their fuel at once. And importantly, that none of them have been missed out. So we have a lot of the key details in place. We've got the redstone circuits that allow the hoppers to lock so that no extra lava buckets can come in. That's that circuit down there. We've got the AND gate circuit. This is the one that tells the system when all of the hoppers have unlocked, then this one will switch off. Now we just need the system that will allow these hoppers here to unlock when this AND gate activates. Why is all of this stuff sounding so complicated? It's honestly really, really simple. It's not, it's not complicated stuff. Clearly I'm just in a make me sound smart mood today. Just everything that comes out of my mouth sounds, sounds intelligent, which is incredibly rare. You know, this might be one of the first days that's ever happened. Now I may sound smart, but actually I'm being pretty silly because currently I've got it set up so that I can't take items from out of the furnace which kind of defeats the object of the entire build. So I have to go back to the drawing board a little bit here, and honestly, I mean, the only solutions that I can think of are quite big and bulky. You see, I can't pull these blocks down vertically using these pistons here because they're actually going to be powered. When this block gets powered, this piston will get stuck and it won't retract. Hmm, something like this should hopefully do the trick, making use of slime blocks and honey blocks to stack them all next to one another. Now I actually have to work out how I'm going to power these sticky pistons. It turns out my original idea was pretty flawed, but now I've come up with a new one. And if it doesn't work, I'm literally going to drop kick my computer out of my office. Right, if we get the lava bucket into this minecart hopper, that is good. Okay, you can see it's filling in. So that then whips across. All right, the next set are filled. And then with this final one right here, all of them should fill up and then they should all empty. Yes, yes, that is good. So every single one of these furnaces now has a lava bucket on the inside of it. Finally, this is just one of many towers of minecarts I've created in the process of trying to get this thing to work. Anyway, it does work. Now it's time to expand it. So that is 30 furnaces, but that's nowhere near big enough. That is 120 furnaces, but we're still nowhere near. This is 240 furnaces and we're getting there. 300, 300 is my number. Now, if you're wondering why, it's because that's the maximum number of items that you can fit inside of a minecart hopper, bar I think a handful. You know, we're missing two for every single strip. So how many would that be? 20. So you can store 320 items inside of a minecart hopper. We are going to be using pretty much the entirety of that capacity for our gigantic super smelter. And I think we can all agree that this thing looks pretty amazing. 
Yeah, it looks pretty ridiculous. This is probably the dullest job of the entire project, but I have to connect everything up. And even though it is incredibly dull, it is also still improving the look of this thing. I mean, look at this. Somehow just adding these tiny little things along the sides here have just, they've taken it to the next level. Now let's get all of the hopper minecarts in. These first ones are for the actual smelting items. So for example, these, all of these are going to fill up with cobblestone that will all be smelted to stone using this gigantic super smelter. With that being said, if you're using a super smelter this big to smelt cobblestone into stone, then you might need to reevaluate your life a little bit. If you have managed to create a super smelter of this size without getting silk touched, then honestly, that's more impressive than anything. I've discovered a bit of a flaw in my redstone, which is a tiny bit stressful, but I think I've come up with a new solution. I hope I have, and it looks like it's working. We'll just have to wait and see how it handles actually getting lava buckets in. But now it is time for the first major test. All of these furnaces currently have lava buckets on the inside of them. They're all fully fueled up. So I'm going to chuck some items in and see if everything is actually getting smelted. If not, I throw myself out the window. Here it goes. So five stacks. That will be one minecart load. And activate. I have to say, this takes a little bit longer to fill up than I was expecting. Is that is that going to be fast enough? I mean, I hope, I hope it's going to be fast enough. Right, let's start picking up all of the buckets and things from the furnaces. But that little minecart right there is going to be traveling around and it is going to be dropping cobblestone into all of these, <laughs> into all the furnaces. And by the time it gets to the end, we should have smelted around about five stacks of cobblestone. Now looking in these hopper minecarts at the end, you can see we've got all of the iron buckets from all of the furnaces. And then there is the 300 pieces of smooth stone. So the first test was successful, but that was to be expected. The second test, which is my fueling test, I'm a little bit more nervous for. So I've got a bunch of lava buckets on the inside of these chests right here. If we hit this button, that will release one of the minecarts. It will fill up. And it is on its way. Okay, after a slight hiccup there, we are now... Sending off these minecarts at relatively quick succession, and you can see as it goes along <laughs> that it is gradually filling up. So those comparators are furnaces that are being filled with lava buckets. Now all I'm hoping is, are we actually going to run out of hopper minecarts by the time these reach the end? We might have done this to perfection, you know, because these guys are about to come around the last corner, and as long as we don't get a dead spot, we have absolutely nailed it. Look at this! So our empty hopper minecarts are now returning and our canister is refilling and look at this, look! Look, we are making progress! We are making progress, everything is filling! We are halfway full, we are halfway full with the lava buckets. We are on the home straight, this guy right here drifting, that is the second to last one and this one should be the last one. The redstone line is shut off. Whoa! Okay! They all emptied! That seems to have worked! I mean, all of the furnaces do now have lava buckets on the inside of them. It is all... it's all functioned! <laughs> this is a silly, silly mechanism. This is... this is bonkers. Every single furnace has been filled with fuel, everything worked properly, this is fantastic news. Thankfully, I've not had to defenestrate myself, but there are a number of flaws that we need to address. Number one is item distribution is way too slow. The items are being smelted before a new one gets put into the furnace and that is inefficient and it's not good. And number two is this is my storage system right here. This is this is it, which yes, it's not ideal, is it? So problem number one has now been fixed and I have two of these things which will gradually fill up which means we've doubled the speed of output of items. This is very, very good. I still have not worked out a good solution to my storage system though, like at all. I thought I could just put them over the top of hoppers, but obviously that's not going to function because hoppers are way slower than hopper minecarts and I can't believe I didn't think of this when I started building it. But I have come up with one potentially ridiculous and stupid idea that might just work. Okay, okay. If there are items on the inside of there, they, they've, they've got to pop out, right? All right, we are in business. This build is incredibly, incredibly flawed, but I still love it. We now have a storage system, so this is good. Now we need to create the system that will allow us to get the fuel to actually power this thing. I've just made my way into the latest snapshot, and in this snapshot, we can make use of cauldrons to catch drips of lava 
that will then allow us to have a renewable lava source. So this right here is my little cauldron snake. I'm going to be standing up here with a bucket, holding down the right click button. When one of these cauldrons fills up with lava, I'll be able to grab the lava and then it will pop out of my hand because my inventory will be full. It will land down here and then it will make its way into the system. Now it turns out my original idea for creating the cauldron snake is actually totally flawed given that every single time one of them fills up with lava, it would update the observers that I was using to power the cauldron snake which would break everything so now instead i've added in this redstone line which connects up all of our pistons with the correct timings and that should now all be working okay excellent news this thing is functioning we now have automatic lava generation just to give a quick demonstration now that everything's in place i'm in survival mode holding down the right click button lava buckets are being shot out they're being picked up by that hopper and then this dropper behind me is giving me a fresh empty bucket every single time an actual lava bucket ends up in the system so we have a constant supply and you can see just in the time i've been building this this thing has done a lot of lava filling. Like, it's all pretty much filled. So the furnace is sorted, the fueling sorted, now it's time for a full test. All of our furnaces are currently fully fueled, and you can see these comparators right here represent all of the lava buckets that I just got. So our fueling system is working perfectly. Now it's time for the part that I'm most scared about, which is the item loading, and also the item storage systems. So I am going full, full bulk smelt here. This is, this is an awful lot of items, and in theory, I mean, I should be able to press a button somewhere that I can't remember where it is, and it will kickstart the thing. Are you ready? Because I'm not. I mean, it all works in theory. It all works in theory. Right, first minecart's in. Second minecart is now in. Items are being loaded. Everything should now be prepping up to go. So these guys are going to fill up with all of their items, and then we should see one of these hover minecarts, this one right here, travel off first. And then this one should follow it, and all of these furnaces should be getting items on the inside of them. So there we go. Now we should also have, down underneath here, a few hopper mine carts traveling around as well. Yep. Okay, so those are going to be picking up all of the items that are being smelted, and also they will have picked up all of the empty buckets on the inside of the dispensers. And soon enough... They are going to start traveling through <laughs> into our slightly strange item pickup system, which involves shooting our hopper mine carts with arrows. So everything is going pretty well so far. And our first few with actual items on the inside are coming out now. This system seems to be working. So look, you can see that it's just about filling up fast enough. Yes! It's filling up at the right speeds. We are at maximum efficiency. This is so good. So the furnaces are just about keeping up with the demand. And look how much glass is coming out of here now. So we're going to see that quite frequently. Every single one of these hopper mine carts here should be carrying with it a decent chunk of glass. I mean, if we if we look in these, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is ridiculous. All of the furnaces, all of the furnaces are filled with sand. So they are they are working at maximum efficiency. All of the furnaces, every single one of the furnaces right here has got sand on the inside of it. All of them are smelting simultaneously. We've got 300 furnaces smelting all at once. And all of their items are just pouring out. I mean, look. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a nuts amount of glass. I would say this is a success. You know, we have got a renewable resource. We have got automatic lava loading. We have got 300 furnaces working simultaneously. It's all powered by minecarts and Minecraft logic and general oddness. I I'm quite surprised that this has managed to function. It's flawed in so many ways. It's totally flawed. But I am really happy that we managed to make this work. And this is a hilarious redstone contraption. I can't wait for people to improve this thing. I'm sure they will, but I'm just happy to see the end of it. And I'm happy to see that it is actually working. And it is producing the ridiculous quantity of items that I was expecting it to. 
because this is this is bananas. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya. Now I think this is a good time to say I'm sure there's technical people who are watching this video right now who are laughing at how ridiculous this design is. Just remember, this was all for fun. I gave myself the creative challenge of just trying to come up with something like this. And I just use as many techniques as I could to create a fun build, and I think I've done that well. I'm actually really happy. This was a super fun old school style redstone video, and I loved it. I want to do more.